What's happening good people? Welcome to Where's His Watch Room. As you've seen by the title, we're going to be trying to explain Solar Quartz movements from a beginner's perspective and go into a little bit more detail about how they work. Now I don't think enough people talk about Solar Quartzes and I think they're a technology that definitely need more attention. So hopefully this video might help with that and might get a few more people interested in solar technology and Solar Quartz movements. I also want to say a massive thank you to the watch shop they were kind enough to loan in a few watches to feature in this video and allow me to showcase those at the end as well as you know get some nice footage of how everything works in this video so you can find a link to all the watches down in the description as well as the watch shop itself so uh let's you know do a little bit of explanation about how solar watches work because it is quite fascinating so if uh, my explanation is a little bit iffy, I've uh, you know put some more reading material down in the description. Because you have to remember guys, I'm not a professional, just an enthusiast that likes this technology. So again, if something I'm uh, you know say doesn't make sense, I'll put some further reading material if you're interested. So uh, let's break down how this all works. So essentially we start off with the light source. Now typically you'd think uh, the sun is the only source that can actually charge a uh, solar powered watch. Well in fact that's not correct. In terms of um, Citizen and I think others perhaps as well can actually be charged by artificial light. Now keep in mind when they're charged by artificial light it's not as potent as the sun and it does take a lot longer to charge if you are doing it that way. It's typically a few hours longer if you're having it in um, you know, say in an office environment and you're wearing one there, it's going to take a lot longer to charge than it would if it's in, you know, direct sunlight. So anyway, uh, let's talk about how it all works. So when we get light energy from either one of those sources, this is captured by the watch and it's done that through a solar cell. So this is typically placed behind the dial or in, uh, you know, Casio's case with the G-Shocks, it's behind the digital display. So once the light hits the cell, it is absorbed into the photovoltaic elements. This creates an electrical charge as a response to an internal electrical field in the cell, which in turn causes electricity to flow. So this is done as the cell consists of two different types of silicone. We have a P-type, which is placed next to an N-type. So the N-type is a layer that holds an excess of electrons, while the P-type, there is an excess of positively charged holes. This creates a junction called the depletion zone, in which the electrons fill the holes. So once this occurs, the holes on the P-side, that were once empty, now contain negatively charged ions, whereas the N-side now has positive ions. This presence of oppositely charged ions creates an electrical field that prevents electrons in the N layer from filling the P layer. So essentially what's happening here is a case of flow. We've got a flow of electrons from one part of the cell to another. So when sun or light hits uh, the cells in the electrons, the silicon is affected and actually reforms the initial holes which I was talking about, that flow. So instead of collision, it's just a nice fluid flow between the P side and the N side. So what engineers have done here is they've actually bridged the two sides using an electrically conductive material. So essentially, the electricity can be captured by this flow and transferred into the next part of the cell. So this energy that we've just talked about uh, being created is stored in either a capacitor, which is an old technology, or a rechargeable battery, which is what you'll see in new solar quartz movements. So this uh, battery or, or capacitor is used to release energy in the form of a current. So this current travels from the uh, battery or the capacitor into the microchip circuit. So this circuit makes the tuning fork crystal vibrate 32,768 times per second, which is then converted into a single electrical pulse. Now I'm not entirely sure how that works. Uh, that's gonna need some further investigation, but essentially when the uh, crystal vibrates, it vibrates insanely fast 
but somehow it's stepped down and created into a single electrical pulse. I'm not really sure how it's done. I'm presuming it's part of the internal quartz um, uh, microcircuitry and um, obviously some sort of processing going on there as well to get that. Again, I'm not really, uh, you know, ooh, <laughs> on that side. It's a little bit more complicated than just turning vibrations into, you know, there is something else going on there as well. But essentially, once the conversion has happened, another circuit uh, detects this which I've just talked about, and converts them into an electrical pulse, which we've just mentioned as well, which is, again, one per second, which, you know, a standard quartz has one tick per second. So these pulses actually drive what's called a stepping motor. So this stepping motor uses those little pulses and converts them into usable mechanical power, which is what we want. Now, this mechanical power is then used to turn all the little gears and uh, little cogs and all that stuff that's inside the movement itself and all that is used to power the hands so it's essentially one big circuit so we start off with a cell that goes down into the capacitor or the battery the battery passes power to the uh, circuitry the circuitry converts all the energy into usable energy in the stepping motor the stepping motor then converts that into no, no. So essentially what's happening here is just a big circuit, well not a big circuit, a small circuit. So we're taking light from the solar cell which is converted into usable electricity which is then charging up a battery. The battery is then taking energy and putting it into the uh, micro circuitry which is then oscillating the um, quartz crystal. That oscillation is then turned into a pulse that pulse drives the stepping motor the stepping motor then converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy which is driving the hands by a gear train and well that's about the thing of it of course you know there are steps in between that are a little bit more complicated and to be honest guys i'm not really sure how these vibrations are converted into an electrical pulse I'm, I'm not really sure how that works so that's going to take some you know further research on my part but essentially that's what's happening inside a solar quartz movement and i believe um you know all of the um companies use a very very similar method i'm not really sure how um you know um casio do theirs on the uh, on their tough solars so that's going to take some research on its uh, on its own because I think it works in a little bit of a different way than a uh, traditional solar quartz like you'd find in the Timex and the Citizen and the Accurus that we've shown. And I think, you know, uh, the process is pretty much the same for each manufacturer as well. You know, of course, you know, there's only a certain finite amount of ways to do this in such a small space. So I'm presuming there's some sort of shared knowledge between them. Uh, that allows them to uh, you know use this without sort of impeding on anything uh, you may like um uh, what would it be called um like any trademarks or if they've got any uh, proprietary technology i'm i'm presuming there's some sort of you know ag agreement to do this because there's only like i said a finite amount of ways that this can be done so i'm presuming to you know keep things interesting you know the epson you know wouldn't with citizen and i don't know to be, to be honest i'm just speculating but i'm presuming there's got to be some something there in order to have competition because obviously you know we're not really allowed monopolies anymore you know we're not allowed to have one company that just controls one thing so for example we couldn't have citizen just being the only brand that does solar watches you know because that's not really uh it's not really good for the consumer let's just say uh, I know I'm waffling a little bit, but I'm just trying to like wrap my head around, uh, you know, um, how each individual one works. And I'm presuming if you took a one apart, it would probably be very, very similar, if not identical, just, you know, manufactured by their own companies. Again, guys, I'm just speculating here, so I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, we've got the Timex as well. I'm not sure where they source uh, their solar quartz is from uh, i'm not too sure i know citizen make their own uh seiko's is the epson group of course uh, that's what powers theirs that's what's also powering the accurist as well um that is an epson because uh, obviously they're part of the seiko epson family 
So obviously they share components and stuff like that as well. So it's not proprietary to Accurist. It's uh, you know part of the umbrella, let's just say. But I hope you've enjoyed this different video and. Um, well, I'm just going to show you some uh, some sort of watches as well because you know they're uh, they're really cool. So of course, you know we've got the uh, Citizen Eco Drive, and uh, you know guys, I'm a big fan of Citizen Eco Drive. I have this diver, and I've had a chronograph, uh, which you can see on screen now for oh god, well over a decade, and it's been going strong ever since. And uh, this is a newer example. It's got a uh, newer battery in it, newer tech in it, and um, I've seen some cases of these. Um, you know these batteries and stuff lasting for like well beyond what mine did uh, whereas now you know technology it's advanced a lot in these 10 uh, well over 10 years and things have progressed battery technology's got better you know um, and everything's obviously got better over time uh, but yeah this uh this casio one though is really fascinating to me because obviously um there's no stepping motor inside this because you know it's got no hands to power so yeah that one's going to be um i'm going to try and do some research into how this works too because I'm quite fascinated by how the Casio works because it's just different than the other solar quartz. Now, I'm presuming the initial step with the solar cell and everything is the same. But then it's obviously got to change a little bit because it's digital. So, yeah, I'm a bit curious to see how that works as well. So, I'm definitely going to do some more research into that and probably make a separate video. Because, yeah, it's quite it's quite interesting and quite fascinating how, you know, it all works. So, yeah, you can tell I'm quite quite excited about this. You know, it's a, it's a fun technology. It's a cool technology. So, yeah, guys, I'm just going to shut up now because I've been waffling on for ages. So, thank you for bearing with me. I have hope you've enjoyed this video. And, again, if you know if I've confused anyone, uh, you know, there's some reading material in the uh, description. So thanks guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content on the channel, click the links you can see right now. Like the video if you enjoyed it, hit that bell so you don't miss any future content and of course, feel free to subscribe if you want to stay in touch with the channel. Thanks very much, have a good one.